All right. Hi, everyone. So I think we could just hear the, the bell from outside, which is nice, <laughs> just done. So we can start now. Um, thanks for coming to this session uh, on cycles on Intel GPUs, Intel GPUs, and all things around with these in Blender. My name is uh, Xavier. Uh, I've been working on uh, the um, one API back, uh, backend in cycles with uh, Nikita and Stefan, who are based in, in Germany, but they are here today. Um, also, well, on Blender side, I've worked with many people. Um, I haven't broke master, so not that many people. Uh, but still, a lot with, uh, I need to thank uh, Sergey, Ray, uh, Ray also. <laughs> we have a lot of work to these guys too, and uh, here to present uh, all we did. If you have questions, you can interrupt me because I have uh, various topics in this presentation. So you don't need to wait till the end, so I can still remember <laughs> what I've just said. On the agenda, well, brief um, presentation of the Intel GPUs, what are they today, why one API, a short demo. We'll talk then a lot more deeper about the implementation uh, in cycles and how it works with tools, performance tuning, and uh, our roadmap for Blender. Can't really talk about the roadmap for GPUs themselves. So on GPUs, here is our current uh, lineup for desktop. We have uh, the usual three, five, seven uh, ranks. Uh, we don't have nine yet. We're really aiming at um, low and mid range in the market, what a lot of people want. Um, <coughs> so here are the details. We have varying number of execution units. On the media side, the stack is basically the same across uh, all. And we have variations of these uh, for laptops and also for workstations. A little bit more into details, uh, some things that are really nice with these uh, new discrete GPUs is also the presence of um, AV1 encoder, which uh, was really industry first when we released the ARC A380 uh, earlier this year. And well, actually today you can already use it in software like uh, FFmpeg from, from master and it's uh, getting traction and really happy about users using everyone. Well, everyone is not the topic today. Topic is Blender. So let's talk about GPU support in Blender. Here is an overview of how it worked before, um, before I joined the project also uh, with Blender 2.x. Well, Blender 2.x already supported Intel GPUs, so it's not really a, a new thing to support Intel GPUs, I could say. The only issue was uh, it was supported through uh, OpenCL um, correctly sometimes. Well, there were was some share of bugs, it appears, and well, something happened, which is uh, Blender 3.x, and then, well, it's definitely not my words uh, here on the slide, but. Uh, sad reality is that um, they decided to remove OpenCL support because um, of many reasons. And that means that uh, basically Intel GPUs, AMD GPUs, uh, Apple GPUs were not supported anymore. So what we did, not just us, but the whole industry was to let's make it work again through something that's not OpenCL. So the sad part is Fragmented the APIs. Um, good part is that now we have a good API one. <laughs> but uh, talk about it uh, on the slide right after. So it took some time, especially for us, to come back with Intel GPU support. And we're starting with the discrete GPUs. Um, but well, that's where the performance is on, on the discrete GPUs. So yeah, everybody is working on it kind of its own backend um, to make it work. It's still the same code base in cycles that's able to target all of these. And then the framework is kind of aside. We'll go a little bit deeper uh, into these topics. In Blender, well, you have all the shading and also all the intersections. And um, nowadays, you have hardware retracing. We do have hardware retracing on all of our Intel discrete GPUs. Right now in Blender, um, we don't support these uh, yet. We need Embry to finalize uh, support for the hardware retracing uh, on our GPUs, and then we'll be able to integrate. So our solution um, as backend to use after OpenCL has been to go with one API. So one API is also used as for a lot of things in Intel. It's a bit, uh, 
of a marketing term, sometimes a bit painful, but here in this context, it's one API, and what we've been using is one API DPC++ compiler that's also based on the SQL language. So we're not the only one who can bring a SQL uh, DPC++, um, I mean, a SQL compatible compiler and make this. Um, but I think our compiler is quite compelling. You'll see this uh, in some of the next slides. So one API is really what we want to help people to not be stuck with vendor lock-ins um, and to really be able to work all together with code base that can target many different hardware, vendors, and so on. And we meant it to be really open. Um, so there is now a new uh, community forum. There is, a, there is a process to standardize everything because now I think we have product that's quite ready and, and can be used um, and, and be dri uh, driven by a broader audience of people who want to run things on hardware and not reinvent the wheel uh, four times. So yes, our, our one API uh, goal is to be able to target uh, CPU, GPUs, FPGAs, or really whatever, <laughs> because we can also find other types of uh, compute devices. Um, of course, if compute device is very specific, it may not be exactly the same code, but uh, all the ecosystem should, be, should make it easy for you to target this. So in Blender uh, One API backend, we're using the One API data parallel C++ compiler. It's uh, our implementation of a SQL language that's driven by Kronos, so again, an open standard. It really allows code to be reused uh, across hardware targets, different compilers, so you can find other compilers that allow you to use SQL, like Compute CPP, TreeCycle, and uh, other funny, world, funny names. But, um, we are, I've, I haven't tried the other compilers, our focus has been to use the Intel one, but not just for Intel hardware. Uh, I'll give some more details. So yes, our compiler is basically able to compile C++ with um, the SQL extensions and with also additional extensions that uh, I think we needed. Uh, but our goal is to make this also part of the SQL language uh, if, over, if over swans this. Going <coughs> more precisely into the architecture of um, our DPC++ uh, stack. So there is the compiler at the top, then we have a runtime. Underneath that runtime, we have a plug interface that's rather simple, and that's what really allows people to come up with plugins to support new hardware. So on our end, if you download the compiler from the Intel website, you'll get you'll get it with just the level zero and OpenCL uh, backends. And actually, if you go the open source way and grab it from GitHub and compile it yourself, you can already compile yourself a backend for CUDA and HIP, uh, who are also being heavily worked on and they're in pretty good shape. I mean, if you have been down there checking out our, our demos right now, we're running, we're sharing code that runs on uh, using all these backends at once. I mean, CUDA, HIP and level zero. So it's a rather clean um, API. So plugin interface uh, allows to just implement everything in a single backend file. We have plugin discovery mechanism. So um, at runtime, you're able to discover backends. Um, and, and yes, yeah, so that's how we enable the stack. Uh, one thing you'll see here is also the, um, the fact that you can run the same code on uh, CPU. But right now, the only solution we have for CPU that allows to use more than one thread, <laughs> which may be important, um, is to use the CPU as a device, like you would use the GPU and so on. But right now, it's going for the OpenCL runtime and a specific OpenCL CPU runtime. Um, so this part is not ideal yet. Uh, the vision is ready to make you able to run the code as fast as possible on any, any GPU, but also any CPU. But right now, um, I would say that the um, CPU backend in cycles is pretty safe from that competition. Uh, not, uh, not really ready to, to unify this part. We have a lot of good solutions for CPU um, and the, the stack is already quite good. I think on our end, we need to, to make improvements to, to, the open CL, to the CPU device. So all being worked on in the open. I mean, this old compiler is on, uh, on GitHub and you can check it out by, by yourself as well. 
So key differences between CUDA HIP and OneAPI as a developer. Um, so OneAPI is really C++ oriented. Um, everything is C++ in there. If you don't like templates, maybe it's going to be complicated at first, but it's not that bad. Uh, I'm not a big C++ fan sometimes, but still it's good and it allows things to be clean and more um, better defined in terms of type, safety and things like that. So that's the good part. Uh, rather than uh, sharing void pointers everywhere and then, ooh, <laughs> what what is that thing? I, I ever tried that for uh, like three lines of templated errors, <laughs> but at least it shows points you to somewhere. So everything is defined as uh, classes, methods. Uh, you have um, exceptions that you can can be thrown from anything you call from SQL, and you can also have your own async uh, exceptions and loss using C++ exceptions too. On the memory side, you have two choices. Um, you can deal with memory like you would do in OpenCL. Um, well, or you can also use pointer-based, which is the solution we went uh, with for Blender. On memory location, pointer-based is what, what we call unified, uh, unified shared memory. So you have one space, and you can just call malloc um, um, malloc to uh, allocate on the host device or on target device, but also shared if you don't really know <laughs> which device you sh should pick and want to let the runtime guess. Well, in Blender, too much what the other backends are doing. We've been using um, um, specific uh, allocations, so we're targeting device and host uh, specifically. But yeah, malloc shell is also a potential solution. And it's the uh, same free function for, for all. The only drawback of using um, this is that right now uh, there is no support for hardware sampling. So you just need to re-implement um, all the interpolations uh, in software. So, But it was already done for CPU, so it was not a big deal to, to do. And performance impact is not that big still. We could gain some, and um, uh, it will come in the future. Uh, don't know when, but well, need to be a standard first and then to implement the old chain behind it to make it work. And the open CLware, I'm not going to talk too much about it because we're not using it, um, but uh, you need to define buffers, uh, accessors, and uh, it's nice in a way, but huge limitations for Blender is that you need to know everything at compile time in terms of how many images, well, textures you will need, which in case of Blender is, well, uh, no. Well, you can't tell users, yes, uh, after this number, uh, you need to recompile. <laughs> Not going to work. So what was it for Primer on um, the One API, how it works? Right now, the One API backend in Blender, it supports the Arc Discrete GPUs. I have some tricks in my sleeve if you really want to make it run on uh, Intel integrated graphics, uh, older GPUs, and so on. Um, we don't really test it, so that's why we don't really want to release it. Also, the performance, I mean, do you really want to run all the EV scenes on, on, um, on an iGPU? Well, if you have one of the yes, iGPU, it may bring a little bit more performance than your CPU, but not by a huge margin. Um, still, with iGPU, you can theoretically use uh, a lot of your um, system's memory, DR4, Maybe easier to have in huge volume than uh, on a GPU. So, if you <laughs> if you really want to re render your scene using, and it needs 30 gigs of mem, yeah, you can use the iGPU. Not sure how fast it is, but well, you can try it and let let us know if it's uh, if it's interesting to you. And stages of it in the implementation. Well, we have all features up and running. Um, at least I haven't seen a lot of bug reports yet. Well, cards are not been out for uh, that long. Uh, but people who have been using it have been pretty happy with it on both um, Linux and Windows, as far as I know. And everything is open in it. I mean, SQL is an uh, open standard. One API is uh, as an um, open forum uh, being created now. Um, compiler is open source itself. It's on GitHub. The backends are open source. The GPU binaries compiler is open source. And the, the runtime itself is open source, so if there is a bug, you should be able to, to track it down. And we'll help you, no problem. 
So I've shown them off how it works, but well, uh, I hope you already seen a lot of it uh, down there um, in the lunch area, where, where we show it live on a Ubuntu machine with uh, a bit more than just Intel GPU support. But here is how it looks in uh, 3.3, so 3.3 stable. And so seen from a colleague uh, called Bob Duffy, who worked a lot with us. Um, so resident artist who is much better than me on uh, making stuff crash, because uh, when I tried, everything works all the time. Uh, so we need people like him. <laughs> and that's, uh, yeah, really thanks to him that everything was quite stable at launch, I would say. It was a pretty good performance. Um, I have some other slides on, on the plans for, for performance, of course. And you can check by, uh, by yourself down, downstairs. So in the detail, um, yeah, I'll go in details on the build system and then on the code itself. Um, so here's the uh, overall look of how it works. So when you target one API backend, um, so at build time, well, the first part would be Embryon GPU. It's work in progress. It's going to use one API as well when it will be re released to target Intel GPUs. Then you have the one API DPC++ compiler. Um, then the graphics compiler, because we want to pre-compile um, all the binaries to, to uh, gain some time for the users. Otherwise, it would take 15 minutes, 20 minutes on the user's machine. You don't really want to wait that long before a first render, uh, so we pre-compile. Then uh, you have a SQL runtime that ships with a, that's part of a compiler stack, and the level zero backend. And we package, package both the runtime and the backend inside the application, so as a shared library. And then at runtime, um, we, the backend expects to find the level zero loader, because level zero is a bit like OpenCL. Um, it's an API that should be cross vendors, and anybody should be able to, to make its own uh, level zero implementation. So the loader is not called in, uh, not particularly called DPC++, and uh, it's really for level zero, and it's uh, separated from, from the um, Intel-specific runtimes. On Windows, it's part of the graphics drivers. On Linux, uh, guides should tell you to install it, but if you're missing it, it's a separate package. And then at runtime, you can have the uh, graphics compiler being used. It's the same compiler, but as part of a driver, if you're missing the binaries. It will be used if you just don't have a binaries because you're using an unsupported GPU, for example. Or you try to use 3.3, uh, Blender 3.3 with a, a GPU that will re release in two years. Will still work, hopefully. <coughs> and then you have all the rest of the kernel. I will not talk much about this. So practically, <coughs> where you can get the compiler when working with Blender, well, it's easy. Uh, we do have our own pre-built packages uh, from GitHub. But what we've done with Blender, because of the FX platform um, requirements mainly, uh, and compatibility reasons that we don't honor with uh, previous packages, is to recompile everything. And um, we store these pre-builds on SVN along with all the other pre-builds. So you don't need to download anything, or any extra packages when, downloading, uh, when building Blender with one API backend. Actually, you download, call make, uh, release, uh, and you have it included. Don't need to, to download anything on the website, accepting any end user license agreement. I think it's quite a smooth process. And even down to the uh, GPU binaries, so the um, compiler that uh, generates the GPU binaries, you also, it's also compiled on Blender infrastructure, and you'll find it on SVN if you're targeting Linux. If you're targeting Windows, um, it doesn't really compile from sources at the moment. So you can download the uh, pre-built package from a specific web page on the Intel website. So one extra step on, on Windows if you want to, to pre-compile the, the binaries. But well, during development, uh, JIT is convenient, usually. Oh, it's integrated in CMake, so with cycles device one API and with cycles one API binaries are other two options, like for the other backends. Internally, the way it works, it's going to call a DPC++ compiler through that's named Clang++ here with a dash f SQL. So it's compiled to to, call, um, to compile SQL code and handling everything. So we, we call this using add custom command. 
with proper environment variables. And now the cool part, so that's also what we demonstrate downstairs, is that it's one API. We want it to be able to run on all platforms, not just Intel. And so we didn't spend a lot of efforts making it work, but uh, Stefan made the first try at uh, making it work, and it worked. So <laughs> we found it cool. <laughs> that's why we're showing it. It's without much um, changes, you can just take latest master. Um, add a few specific SQL targets to compile to compile AMD HSA and NV PTX um, for specific platforms. So one thing to note: if you target AMD um, stacks, since they don't have uh, intermediate representation uh, yet for the compiler, you need to specifically ask for the target arch architecture for AMD. And well, you can also set architecture for NVIDIA, but if you don't have it, it will be recompiled from PTX. And well, so not everybody has uh, all devices from all the back uh, from one API backend. We just safeguard with this with uh, with two environment variables, um, so SQL device filter, and cycles one API all devices. So actually, if you want to target Intel um, in iGPUs, you just need to use this environment variable cycle one API all devices, and should show up, compile, and run. And and it's been a long time I haven't made it crash. But, uh, <laughs> and that's really all um, you need to just have a build of Blender with one API backend that runs on uh, all platforms. And that's what we were showing downstairs and performance is actually quite good. Um, we are not running at 10% of the <laughs> native uh, thing, otherwise we wouldn't show it. Um, I can't disclose performance numbers, but you can check it yourself downstairs, actually. Uh, yeah. We don't uh, hide the timers or, or, or whatsoever. We're quite proud of the um, performance there. And our colleagues uh, work on one API, really want, are really aiming for just matching the performance. So if it's not 90% or 95%, they're not happy, and you can report a bug. Only thing you're going to lack going through this um, backend is the hardware retracing because right now um, AMD and NVIDIA don't really open um, all their hardware retracing works um, if you want to target it from um, from an API and from, uh, from HIP. Uh, but if they open it a little bit, well, maybe in the future we'll be able to even run with uh, hardware retracing from here. So with these settings, practically what it means, uh, if you want to run something else than Blender, just so you know, it just passes the new SQL targets and uh, specific options for each of these targets. And if you really want to reproduce all the demo we did downstairs at home, you just need this slide. Um, so it gives a way to recompile the DP++ compiler on CentOS, so it's, it fits well with the other um, Blender dependencies that are used compatible with GDPC 2.17 and the old C++ ABI. Um, then you just specify that you want to use this compiler instead of the one in the pre -builds. And then for AMD, we still have two little fixes to make to, to make the compiler happy. Not a big deal, um, but that let us really match a native hip performance, which is nice. So don't try without this, you could be disappointed. So. If anything doesn't work, we have uh, it's a slide just on troubleshooting. I will not spend a lot of time on it, but we have environment variables, so you can have tracing at all the levels, SQL and level zero. And I'm putting the environment variable. If you have a supported device, you don't see. Well, you still need cycles for an API all devices. Yeah, that was it for e high level, well, build system is not super high level, but well, it's still higher level than the code. Um, <laughs> let's dig into this part. So cycles itself, yeah, these are kernels written in um, C headers, uh, meant to compile all the backends at once. So there are very small differences. Um, I think Brecht would give us a black eye, dark eye if uh, we put a lot of if defs uh, everywhere uh, for targeting the various backends. It's really not the goal, and that's rather clean at the moment. 
all the backend specific code is contained into a compact header um, and then ways to do the all memory transfers, launching kernels and deal with errors. These have been written with CUDA in mind first, so here is a small dictionary um, to find your way between CUDA and uh, SQL terminology. So yes, nothing is the same actually, but <laughs> SQL is um, more like OpenCL uh, in terms of definition. So subgroups um, are equivalent to the warps. Um, uh, and just one thing about subgroups on Intel platforms, um, we can have different uh, sizes of CMD, so we can execute CMD 8, 16, 32 on uh, Intel discrete GPUs, which is something not really common uh, on CUDA, I think there are only 32. Uh, so something to, to watch for if you want to synchronize a lot of things. So the good thing is, well, in cycles, through compat.h, you can still use the CUDA um, terminology. You don't need to switch that much. So it's still simple. The way we are launching kernels, um, so we have basically a big switch case with all the kernels and, uh, um, and all their, their arguments. And uh, I'm definitely not going to show the macros and templates because it's not going to fit on any slide, but well, the end goal of these uh, macros and templates is to learn something like what you find uh, in, the in the second half of the slide. So basically calling um, parallel four on a single dimension uh, range using the specific kernel uh, you, you're calling um, and the global and local sizes. So that's how it works now when it comes to performance tuning, so things to watch for. Like for any GPUs, um, it's often that we spill registers. Some kernels are big and with a lot of variables. It's hard to avoid, but it's important to monitor because it can ruin the performance. Uh, in many cases, sometimes uh, you can get good results if you play a little bit with um, loop and rolling and uh, play with inlining thresholds to make compiler happy. If you make a change and all of a sudden the compiler takes two hours in the, uh, unless, uh, um, instead of uh, 15 minutes, well, maybe something happened. It's good to, to check. Um, you can educate the compiler yourself if you know what you're doing. Just, um, well, I should have put the Blender equivalent here, but yeah, CCL div um, device in line and uh, CCL device no in line, basically. On Intel GPUs and well, also on CUDA, but here is the Intel terminology, you can specify a large GRF mode that gives you twice the number of registers. And you can uh, opt in for it. We do this in the CMake side. Um, <coughs> so, but yeah, all these are things to look for. Um, we have tools to help navigate that. So first one is the Sorry, the compiler output that will, that's really too small on this slide, but it will give you the number of registers allocated, spills the CMD size used. So if you make a change and this changes uh, for the worst, like spilling more registers and so on, it's, uh, it's good to check to, to, to maybe revise uh, the change and it will give you an understanding of why it failed. And in terms of tools, we have our tools. So it's just one of the environment variables to get full debug. We have also an option to um, to output all the assembly uh, in line with the code uh, on Linux. And then we have tools like VTune and OneProf. So VTune right now for Intel uh, discrete GPUs is not fully ready in public. You can have the overall analysis, um, but it's not as uh, good as it could be yet. I mean. I hope soon you will also be able, like on iGPUs, to dig into the exact source code, the lines, and see all the other counters uh, from the GPU and all the memory transfers. I mean, it's super powerful. But right now, Blender is a little bit too big for uh, it to handle, and uh, all, all the software is not completely ready for, for the Intel discrete GPU. You can also run it on other, uh, older Intel GPUs, but then, well, not really running the code on the target, so it's a bit uh, more painful. 
if you want all the other counters, you can already access these through um, one prof. It's just part of uh, uh, the link is in the presentation. It's uh, just a profiler that allows you to dig into all the other uh, counters that are available. If you know uh, Godbolt, that's a um, compiler explorer, so let you just run a quick snippet of code in compiler and then you can see the LLVM IR and even GPU binaries from the browser, which is super cool if you want to check a little snippet and see how it compiles to GPUs. And it is integrated with, um, with a DP++ compiler and even with DP++ compiler with CUDA support. Uh, which is fun, and also if you target, uh, if you don't have Intel discrete GPU yet, because they are often out of stock, you can already run the old one API backend on NVIDIA and use uh, NV tools like NVIDIA Insight. It just works and you get the proper names, and everything is, is up there. <coughs> so that was it for the code part, now what, uh, what are plans, so first of all for Embry, um, so we're waiting for next major release of Intel Embry. Um, it will be in the coming months, months uh, hopefully by the end of this year, and then we'll be able to work to integrate it in Blender. Internally we started that work, we have internal builds uh, up and running, so it shouldn't, be, shouldn't take that long from Embry for GPUs official release to uh, publicly available source code and build of Blender using these. We shouldn't take long. We'll see how it materialize, materialize and what version we can uh, intercept for Blender. Um, but yeah, everything will be uh, happen publicly once uh, Intel Embry is released. Right now we foresee just uh, small code changes, so it will be part of one API backend, for sure. We'll have to, to split the Embry the filter function to, work, to better work with, uh, with GPUs and also um, use 8-bit Roy uh, masks because that's what we need on, on the um, GPU hardware side. Beyond uh, Embry, we have other plans, a lot of plans. So OpenPGL, you have already seen the talk by, by Sebastian and the, and the demo at uh, downstairs. So right now it's only on CPU, but there are plans to make it run also on uh, all GPUs. We have open image denoise already, uh, which gives nice results. But again, not running on GPU yet, so yeah, hopefully, yes, uh, it will progress. On OSL, um, it's maybe a more long-term plan again, but we see a possibility to also make it work um, on, uh, on Intel GPUs in the future, and really have no days, just a whole plan. And we are still working heavily on performance. I think performance is quite good with the backend we have. It will be get better with um, use of the hardware retracing. But even with that, I think our hardware is even more capable of what we are doing today, even if it's quite, quite good. Um, we, we have plans to make it even better um, with the first generation uh, of hardware. So yeah, I expect improvements. We we'll continue working on it. And with that, that was your whole tour. Um, if you have other projects that could use one API, here are some resources. If you have just CUDA codes, it's sad, but we have a sql uh, project that allows you to convert uh, CUDA code to SQL. And maybe you'll never look back. Well, that's kind of what uh, we would hope. Uh, uh, because you're still able to run on CUDA, uh, on NVIDIA GPUs, after going to SQL, and if you get good performance, just stick with it. If you don't get good performance, you can also report uh, a bug on uh, various projects I've presented. They are all open source and, uh, and yeah, open to issues or, or whatsoever. And you could even contribute, uh, although depending on the project, I don't think many people will contribute to the Intel GPU binaries compiler, but still, if you spot a something there, you can. And we have a thread on uh, DevTalk. Um, if you want to give feedback on how it ran, and if you had some issues, you need some troubleshooting. I know setting everything up on Linux right now is easy if you have Ubuntu 22.04 and maybe a little bit more nightmarish if you want to do some, if you're using some uh, fancier setup, but it should be, it should work yeah. and we can help. All right, we have a website to centralize everything we've been showing at the uh, Blender conference. Um, 
you can give it a look. We also have a small contest uh, to win ArcGPU or even a full PC with uh, ArcGPU, a NUC. And with that, um, well, we are very quiet and I think it was a lot of information. Uh, I hope you have maybe some, some questions uh, for now. It's your turn. Yeah, so let me repeat the question for the recording. So you try to compile the one API backend on your laptop and you run out of memory. Uh, do we have any plans to make it this situation a bit better? Um, yes, right now I think if you compile, you need at the very least eight, maybe 10 or 12 uh, gigs of RAM, which is huge. And that's also why we pre built so end users don't compile on their laptops. Uh, yes, we have plans to make it better. I think it's especially at the post-link stage that it gets really bad. Um, yeah, we, we, we try to improve this side as well, yes. But yeah, it's not perfect. Well, thank you very much for the nice presentation. I have a question about the OSL. Uh, do you maybe have some roadmap, some documentation to start with if we want to help contributing and so on? Is there anything? Um, so the question is about OSL support on GPU. How could you maybe even contribute to, to make it happen? Uh, but, and if we have a public roadmap or things like that. Um, I don't think we have a public roadmap on this yet. Um, I'm not particularly... Um, I don't know all of the OSL process and I'm not working with them. Um, just I know that what we are doing is um, public, open source, so you can check the intel.com people who contribute to OSL and open a bunch of requests. That's where the status is right now uh, in OSL. Um, so it's hard to give a date. Uh, these things take time. Um, but that's where you, you can look and you can contact me. I can put you in touch with uh, the correct people if you want to really have a precise um, uh, next steps. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes? Thanks. <clears throat> so let me just summarize because it's a very precise question, but for the recording, so what's the status of um, the performance of running one API uh, on specific backends versus directly running the specific backends? So here, more precisely, one API on HIP versus HIP. And here we have a super nice process to make performance claims. I haven't got the time to follow it at all, so I can't say anything. But you can find your answer uh, using our demo downstairs. Uh, you can open a scene and do the runs yourself if you're interested in. And you'll see, uh, if we show it here, it's because it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I have one question. It's not really Blender related, but uh, you've shown uh, a tutorial to port your CUDA code to one API. Do you have the same for OpenCL to one API? Because I have a lot of OpenCL code which I really prefer to mm. modernize. And I've been busy porting it to HIP, but maybe one API would also SQL is more open than HIP, I think. So anyway. Yeah, so the question is, um, so we have porting tool open source to, to port CUDA code to SQL. Would we have the same for OpenCL? 
Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> well, I would say we don't see a big threat from OpenCL no. as a vendor lock-in, so we haven't put as much effort. But um, porting itself shouldn't be that hard, considering the um, difference between OpenCL and SQL. I mean, your kernel code, all the notions of um, world groups, subgroups, and derange, everything, you'll find it. So I would say a manual process it shouldn't uh, really be awful here. It should be quite uh, natural. But yeah, it could be handy to have a tool for that. Oh, mm -hmm. not even a tool or just some... A guide, guide maybe, maybe, yeah. Knowledge-based, something like that would be I'd nice. But maybe it already exists. Sure, so second question on, yeah, if we have documentation to make it easy to migrate from OpenCL to SQL. Uh, maybe, yeah, Google it. Uh, I hope it exists, and if not, well, uh, I'll make a request. Because, <laughs> yeah, that would be nice, uh, I agree. And it's not the first time I hear about this need from migrating, yeah. Yes? Speaking of migrating code, we have a lot of C or C++ code in Blender, so that we'd like to be able to migrate from Blender to We obviously want to be able to do that on all GPUs, and this is looking really interesting in that respect. Do you think that's sort of like a reasonable goal and something that um, SQL and all this stuff will be able to support in the long term? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> very good question on if um, SQL could be used in other parts of Blender than cycles um, to target all these GPUs, to migrate C, C++ code uh, to GPUs, and uh, I would say yes, and plus, I mean, it's easy now, uh, so not in 3.3 because we had everything in a specific library, a uh, specific um, shared library that was already contained, but now with 3.4 in master, uh, you can just include the SQL header and it will work uh, everywhere. Uh, Kind of cool. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> but uh, at least makes the option to for you to try. Then there is always the um, things like device enumeration, uh, fallbacks, uh, enqueuing kernels. All this needs to be coded as, uh, as well. But yeah, I mean the infrastructure is there already. So yeah. Then you would need efficient CPU execution of the same code. Yes, right, right now the OpenCL CPU runtime is not where it should be yet, need to wait. Uh, I, I recommend using same, I mean, not migrating away all Blender code to <laughs> this infrastructure. I mean, it's not working for every code, it's really for data parallel code. Mm -hmm. um, so right now you can have a good CPU fallback that really targets CPU with uh, usual tools, TBB and everything. Right, I think we're out of questions. Um, perfect. Uh, thank, thanks a lot. And uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. I will be done at the demo. And if you want to talk further about specific projects and, uh, and yeah, everything in Intel, have a good day.